Hey y'all, um, time for another tutorial. Um, I had posted one a couple of days ago and um, it was a two part, um, two videos, one with the centerpiece and then one with the actual bow. So if you didn't catch that, uh, um, that one, then uh, take a look at it very appropriate for summertime and I just wanted to show you something real quick um, this is a smaller version of that particular bow um, but instead you know there's just a little gem in the middle very cute um, but a lot smaller and you know there's some fourth of an inch and three three eighths of an inch and five eighths of an inch ribbon used instead of you know seven eighths or whatever Okay, so I just wanted to show you and um, let you kind of compare the sizes. And it's the exact same tutorial, just two different size bows with rib different ribbons and what have you. Okay. All right, the bow we're going to do today is this one. And we are using corkers. Love the corkers. Uh, there are so many things you can do with them. Um, they are very time consuming to make, so um, I'm going to tell you where you can get them already made up and you don't have to go to the trouble. Uh, this is a light navy blue and hot pink or bubblegum pink uh, nautical um, themed bow. Um, this just has like the little anchors on it. And then if you look at the middle, it's just a small corker um, with a tuxedo bow in the middle. Okay, and that's what we're going to work on today. This is a medium size bow, and like I said to some of you, it may be large, um, but this is, to me, a medium size. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. And the ribbon comes from uh, Hair Bow Center. Okay, so um, we are going to work with the other color in red and light navy. Same ribbon, just different colors. Okay, so I've got um, my ribbon here. This is an inch and a half in width, and it is cut to one yard. Each one of them are cut to a yard. Okay. Um, you will need your salon clip, uh, needle and thread, scissors. Um, probably a lighter possibly um, I am also going to use my wood burning tool all right the glue gun of course and um, you'll need a barrette or an alligator clip whatever your choice is I'm using um, a 50 millimeter um, barrette here so it's like a little bit over an inch, I guess, uh, about an inch and a half, or a little past an inch and a half. Um, you'll need some 3 8 coordinating ribbon to go around the middle part, okay? And um, for the tuxedo bow in the middle, uh, you'll need some type of bow or embellishment if you choose to put that. Um, and I'll, I'll show you real quick how to... Um, you know go through the motions of making a tuxedo bow if that's what you want to add also I will probably put a little gem in the middle maybe I don't know I'll have to see what it looks like um, I'm also using a felt piece to put on the back of the corker um, bow whenever we make it and this uh, ribbon forgot to mention is 7 8 so if you're gonna put a little tuxedo bow you need the 7 8 inch ribbon uh, to make it and then you know three eighths or smaller to go around the middle okay and I think that's everything I'm sure I forgot something anyway we're gonna start first with making the bow okay so you want to line up your ribbon okay you want your inside solid color and then your print on the outside okay so you want to line it up and you need to, if you're using your wood burning tool, you need a piece of cardboard or card stock or something like that um, that you can uh, put your ribbon on to burn it. 
okay and if you haven't watched the other videos um, I've used the wood burning tool a couple of times to um, you know kind of solder the ribbons together so basically I start at the top and go down melting the two together okay and then take that little piece and throw it away and you have that nice smooth edge with no frays okay and then you have your two pieces of ribbon together now if you want to you can use um, the crafters tape the double-sided tape to you know if you're if you're um, still not real coordinated with holding them together you can put the crafters tape on one side of the printed ribbon and and um, you know put it together like that uh, if you choose okay all right and basically you know this is the boutique style bow and you could do a pinwheel you could do any type of bow um, and you know we've we've done this one in several videos if not every video all right so let me move that all right so we start with our first um, loop and I just want to say um, while I'm making this um, you want to make sure you're almost when you, when you do your your loops you want to make sure that this is almost straight up and down okay um, you know you don't want it like this I, I see that's a, a mistake so many people um, make and their bows aren't as um, perky I guess the loops aren't rather okay they're flat so you want to turn it up like this um, to where it's almost straight up and down but not quite it's just at a slight angle okay all right and then I make my second loop and if you um, are like me and you like to use a clip down here just to kind of hold it um, feel free to do that as well okay and then I'm gonna do my third loop here just sliding it in in the back behind this tail and actually I think I'm gonna tighten up my bow a little bit So that I'll have enough room for my top loops. Very rarely do I get it right the first time. I usually always have to do adjustments. Okay. Now third loop again. Okay. And then take your tail and just sort of flop it over like this and you got your fourth one okay and that's basically it okay and the good thing about the salon clip is you know you can actually free your hands up to straighten all right so I'm gonna take the alligator clip off and <clears throat> and you can still fold this with your fingers like the accordion fold and not use the um, you know the salon clip necessarily to hold it while you're doing that but you can you know use it to um, you know do your measurements and, and adjust or whatever like I do I just kind of pull these down like that and same thing right here <clears throat> and then you can take it off of the clip or pull the clip off and then fold it with your fingers or whatever or you can take the needle and thread sometimes when you have two layers it's kind of hard to you know freehand fold it or if it's large okay all right just take a quick look all right so then I take my needle and thread and I go in the back in the center And then I feed it through the top and around the back and through the bottom. Oops. I do that a few times or two times, something like that. 
And again, you want to use upholstery thread. If you use regular thread, it will probably pop on you. All right, and you want to end up at the top in the back, you know, back here, and you pull until it creases the middle. Okay. Kind of take a look, and then when you're satisfied with your crease, you take the clip off. And I still kind of hold it in the middle so that the, you know, the crease stays and it doesn't um, unravel. Okay, so I'm just still kind of holding it. And then, like I said, when you're satisfied, <clears throat> tie it off in the back. One good thing about sewing it in the middle is that it's, you know, it's permanent. You can't pull the loops out or, or whatever. You know, it's, I think, better quality or, or um, you have a better chance of the bow not falling apart. Okay. All right, so there's our bow. And, you know, this ribbon is pretty stiff. So um, I've had some questions about um, stiffeners and, you know, do I stiffen my bows or whatever. The only time I stiffen them is if they're floppy, but, you know, the, the big bows. Um, this ribbon is, is pretty sturdy. Um, you know, if it was real floppy, then I would, I would do it. Sometimes when you're making the large bows, just a... Um, I guess a, a tip when you're making the large bows and even the real big ones like um, look at this huge one this is a mega bow um, this is three inch and I'm gonna do a tutorial on on this type of bow too and it's got the rhinestones all over it um, but when you when you're dealing with ribbon this large sometimes you may want to stiffen the ribbon before you make the bow you just, you know, spray that whole big long piece, whatever, and then let it dry. And then you'll find it easier to actually make your bow. Um, and you could spray it again afterwards if you want to. But, you know, with the big bows, I like to spray the ribbon beforehand. Okay. <clears throat> now, it doesn't matter if you want to put your bread in first or if you want to do your tail first. You know, it doesn't matter in which order. But I'm going to go ahead and... and um, do my tail next so I just put my tail down here and lop off that uneven messy part and make it very neat okay and then at this point um, you want to you know put your barrette put your clip whatever I've got this barrette I am um, a fan of the barrette more so than the alligator clip, but it really depends on your child. I don't have little girls, um, so I never really had to determine which was more helpful to me. I would imagine if I had a little girl, she would have very thick curly hair like I did and do. So. All right, so then you just tie that off in the back and clip. And then you just want to take your 3 8 inch ribbon and surround your middle. And um, I've heat sealed this already, so you want to do that. around the middle, cutting off my excess, and I'm just going to heat seal that and glue it down. Alright, so this is our bow, and you certainly don't have to do a nautical bow or whatever, I just um, thought this was, you know, cute ribbon. Okay, so this is our boutique bow. Okay, and um, let's see if I were to measure this. 
my goodness, this this one measures about six six inches across, a little maybe a little less than six inches, but um, still, it's you know it's about a medium sized bow. I don't know. To me, it is because uh, this is big southern bows. Okay, and then you can put your tension bar back inside the barrette. Use the little trick that I taught you. Okay, and you can just put your bow to the side. We're done with that. All right, now let me talk about the corkers for a minute. If you want to make your own corkers, um, there are several, you know, I, I would assume there are several, um, you know, instructional guides that you can Google. Um, it's basically just baking the ribbon in the oven. It is um, a little bit of a time consuming process. It's not hard, um, but I actually order my corker ribbon from the same place as the nautical ribbon uh, hair bow center and they actually have uh, the two different sizes okay and it comes on a big long strand like this I think you get like two strands or maybe it's one I can't remember exactly what you get and it's not very expensive like a dollar or dollar twenty something like that for I don't know if it's 18 inches or a, you know a yard or two yards something like that it's inexpensive if you know if you're gonna order some other stuff and you know um, make several bows I, you know I, I would do that even even if you're just making one bow um, you know it, it's totally up to you I make a lot of bows so it's worth my time and money or whatever to uh, go ahead and order it already curled okay and this is the 3 8 um, ribbon and this is the uh, one fourth inch okay and you can order in two different sizes which I think is great you know all the colors and then I think there are some prints you can also order okay and I'll leave the link um, in the descriptions for hair bow center and they have the solid color too you know the light navy if you haven't checked them out they've got everything okay now um, I've already made part of the corker and basically what you want to do you want to take those big long strands or what you know whatever if you're making your own you take them off the doll rods and then put them on a you know old towel or, or whatever spray them with either hairspray or the stiff and quick let them dry you know put them in front of the little fan like I do uh, you can get your hair dryer and dry them, I guess. Whatever. You can even put them in the microwave, um, you know, 30 to 40 seconds or until they're dry. And then um, it, it really helps with the fraying, too, whenever you stiffen them. Okay. And then basically, you know, you take your scissors and then you're going to cut them up. Okay. Because they don't come cut up already. Now, with this particular um, corker, uh, let's see, the length that I cut oh it was um, a little past two inches maybe two and a half um, basically I counted four and a half to five uh, loops and I, I cut from there okay and um, now with the uh, fourth of an inch it was more like six and a half loops because it's smaller Okay, so once you've stiffened your ribbon and you've cut it all up, then you want to um, knot your thread and needle, and then basically you just thread the corkers on. Okay, this is how I make my corkers. There, you know, are probably other ways, um, but this is the way I do mine. Okay, and so I'm just going to... Um, Put the last four pieces on now how many pieces did i use seven to eight pieces um is you know is what i used for this course set well um it would be you know 15 or 16 all together it would be um you know seven to eight of each color okay and so i'm just putting my navy piece on and then my red 
and I like the way uh, the two different sizes look. Okay, and then my last piece, I want to get it in the center, you know, on the needle, and then just, you know, feed it through. Okay, and then, you know, you this is basically what you end up with. Okay, and then um, what I do is I then stick my needle back through. I run it back through the entire corker. And you have to be careful. What I do is just kind of put the needle on the table and smash it down. Okay, and run it through. And you just want to be careful that your needle doesn't, you know, go into the to the curls and, you know, into the corkers. It's going straight up the middle. And you just got to be careful that your, your threads don't catch on the, the curls. Okay, then I run it back through one more time. Okay, through the middle one more time. And it's hard to, you know, you kind of have to do it on the table or whatever. Your workspace. Just run the needle through. <clears throat> Sometimes if you need a pair of pliers or whatever, that comes in handy. Okay, and again, I'm going to make sure I've already kind of curled mine up. Mine's gotten caught in here somewhat. Let me pull this through. Got caught on one little curl. Okay, I think that's good. All right, now. Well. Bear with me a minute. Okay, got it. You just have to be real careful. Okay, and then, um, you know, you just want to make sure they're good and stiff and crunchy. And then um, you basically tie it off in the back. You know, run a stitch or two through the back. wanting to catch my my curl here okay now cut your thread off and this is what you have and then you want to take your your piece of felt and glue it to the back and this is just a one inch circle and yes I got it from hair bow center all my supplies here okay and the, yeah these are very inexpensive also like I said if you make um, lots of bows then it would be worth it I think to order it or you can cut them up yourself I guess alright so there's our corker now we can set that to the side for just a minute um, and um, just to just to sh briefly show you how to make the little center bow, um, what I do is I fold it in half and kind of get a crease. And I believe I've demonstrated how to do this before, but I'm just going to do it again real quick. I'm not going to sew it, but I'm going to go through the motions. All right, and then you just go a little bit past the center on both sides, overlap just a little bit. Okay, and then basically you, you fold it in and then you fold the two sides down. You know, you sandwich them in. Okay, and so that's kind of what you have, you know, a fold, a two hump fold or whatever. Okay, and then, you know, basically, <clears throat> I'm not going to sew it, but basically you just get your needle and thread and you go through and you wrap it. And then you glue a piece of, you know, the the three-eighths ribbon around the middle, um, you know, or whatever you want to. Okay. Now, in <clears throat> in this bow, you know, I, I put the little uh, bow 
you know sort of in the middle at a slant or whatever you just have to decide what you want what you think is cute um, you know and, and you don't have to put um, something like that I mean there are all kinds of things you can put in the middle of the corkers you know I have this little crown although it's you know it doesn't go with the nautical theme but um, you know you could certainly do something like that um, you know you could put a big rhinestone whatever you want to do a resin um, you know it depends on the theme of your your bow okay um, but I just simply you know have my little bow right here all right and you just kind of determine where you want to put it okay in the middle and so I'm just gonna sort of put it like that in the center and probably slant it when I put it in the bow okay so I just you know run a, a line of glue through the middle and then just glue it in the middle of that corker you know, stuff it in there however you want And, you know, if you want to leave it like that, you can, or um, if you want to put an embellishment, you know, like the little rhinestone, you can do that too. And I think I will. I got the little red uh, rhinestone gem, whatever. I don't know, I call it a rhinestone, some people call it a gem, the glue. Okay, and so basically that's, you know, this would be cute just on its own, you know, like for a baby, you could put a clip on the back of that. Okay, and our final step. Okay, I've got my felt piece. Okay, so I'm going to put the glue on the felt piece, and this kind of makes it easy um, to attach it. Okay. And I'm going to slant this one like I did the other. Okay. And just hold it for a, a minute. Smash it down so to make sure the glue gets on there good. Okay. And then you can fluff, fluff it back up. Okay. All right, folks, there we go. That's what we have, a little nautical. I, you know, you could wear it for um, 4th of July. I do have some ideas for um, 4th of July, so I will probably do that. Um, we're also going to do a medium-sized um, princess do-it-yourself crown uh, princess, Disney princess bow, I believe, next. I haven't worked out all the details on that yet, but um, you know, and this is kind of what it looks like from the side. These would make good uh, pigtails also, you know, if you wanted to make them a little bit smaller. So, and before we go, I just want to mention, uh, again, the May 2016 uh, giveaway for a pair of flip-flops or bow of your choice. Um, that, you know, that will be, the name for that will be drawn, um, you know, at the end of this month, which we only have... Oh, about eight or nine more days with it being May 22nd. So um, how you enter is to post a picture of your do-it-yourself project, um, whether it be a bow or um, I've had uh, purses that people, um, you know, ladies have made and clothing, um, you know, just gorgeous stuff. It doesn't have to be a hair bow, but, um, you know, if you make wreaths for doors, uh, floral arrangements, anything, um, you know, and it's a, it's a chance to get your craft out there and to show it um, by posting it. And you're going to post that to the uh, Big Southern Bows Facebook page, and I'll leave the link for that. Um, <clears throat> and then once, you know, I have... Uh, everyone's posted and it you know gets to the end of the month then I will certainly draw a name and that's who wins 
and I just want to thank you guys for watching and I get more subscribers every day I'm almost up to 200 at this point and so I really really appreciate the support and I hope you guys keep watching and see you in the next video thank you